Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with MysticGenmara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And today I would like to offer a new tarot unboxing. And this is <laughs> one deck that I have wanted for a while and just never picked up, like a goofball basically. Uh, and that is the official Rider Weight Tarot deck. Uh, or if we're going to be proper, it would be the Smith Weight Tarot deck, but that's for that's in another video. <laughs> uh, this is a deck, the original uh, tarot deck that was used by the Golden Dawn and Aleister Crowley before he developed his own Thoth Tarot. So this particular deck is the one that when we talk about the different uh, artistic stylings within the deck itself, these were the artists rendering by Pixie Smith, Pamela P Pixie Smith, and I did a video on her. Um, and it's really sad in a lot of ways though that she was completely ignored. Her artwork is what made this deck so popular. Prior to her, there were many other decks out there, this is being a brat, uh, that were very scattered. There wasn't a, conc a concise thought pattern behind them. And it's because most people had like a playing card deck, which was your minor arcana, and then your major was a separate deck that was used specifically when you were doing readings. At least that's the lore. Um, but over time, there was there'd been many, 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 many variations, kind of like there is today. But this was the first one that put everything into a concise, usable, functional deck that anyone could access. Um, of course, we have our little booklet here that gives you your general meanings and terms. And honestly, if you're going to start with a beginner deck, uh, the angel decks that I've talked about before are good ones. And the ones that I use frequently, the ones by Radley Valentine, they're a good way to get you a kind of get a foot in the door with the tarot. But if you really want to take it to the next level, you'll need to get a standard deck. And personally even though this is not the one I started with I have done enough research into it I've talked to other readers I've talked to other um, occultists witches etc and the Rider weight is the best option to start with because it gives you a strong foundation within the tarot world or if you decide to join some of the different lodges it Rider weights kind of the standard so uh, as we do with most of the decks we'll kind of flip through so let me separate these out real quick there we go um, we will flip through the major arcana just kind of get an idea of the art style and then we'll shuffle the deck do a general little quick reading here but the artistic styling that Pamela Pixie did is what makes this deck so cool um, and it's also where we get a lot of our modern day imagery. The magician, he's holding his wand, there's the chalice, there's the pentacle, there's the staff, which is not always not used in a lot of circles, some circles. But we also have the sword or the athame. Above the magician's head is the infinity symbol. Saying once you have these tools, you have them forever. And it's also indicating with the magician that it's an ongoing process of taking it to another level, of learning, of deepening your knowledge, deepening your wisdom. The Magician card is probably one of my favorites because of that. But then we have our High Priestess card sitting between the Pillars of Justice and Discipline. Or Benevolence. Oops. Apparently the Empress is being shy because she took a flying leap. But we have the Empress card showing that the Goddess is alive and well. We have the Emperor, which is the indicator of the Divine Masculine, the God in this situation. But these images are very much the core root of what the tarot is. We have the Hierophant being a religious leader or a high priest. Uh, the Lover's card, and this is one of the more interesting cards to me because it's such a basic concept, but it shows the attraction. It's not over sensualized but it's enough to give you the idea of what the card or what the intention is the chariot 
And you'll notice if you look at this, because this was inspired by the Golden Dawn, the dominant use of black and white amongst the images. Because in the Golden Dawn system, which I haven't talked a lot about, just a little, I mean, I've done some videos about it, but when you work through the practices itself, thanks to Israel Regardi's talking about and publishing so much of this work, there's a pill there's pillars black and white pillars and you are the balance between the two you're the middle pillar when you look at the uh, Kabbalah and the tree of life you have two different pillars and the magician the ac the uh, aspirant is the middle pillar within that and so you'll see these this black and white imagery a lot in this tr traditional deck we have strength again dominating the uh, lion, which is ego energy, basically, or aggression. The hermit pulling away from the world. And I like the imagery with this. I like the overall... Um, I like the hermit card in most decks. But this one is just shows that it's time to step away. It's, it's okay to be alone at times. And right there in the bottom corner, right there, that is Pamela's signature. That is the lady who illustrated all of these cards. And in most of these cards, her signature shows up. So, um, Wheel of Fortune. Again, there's Pamela's signature down there in the corner. Uh, going through the ups and downs of life. And they kind of sneak the little devil in there. You see up here we have a sphinx with his knowledge. But you have the devil hanging out down the bottom. And then you have the indicators of all four of the elements. So it's... The more things change, the more they stay the same is kind of the message that goes with that. The justice, holding the, this this card in a lot of ways is judge, jury, and executioner because you have justice being the scales, but you also have the sword being the enforcer of said justice. The hanged man, the epitome of seeing things from a different perspective by hanging upside down, you see that he has become an enlightened being. That's... A lot of the emphasis, the concept that I talk about when I talk about the hanged man, we have the death card, he who rides on a white horse wearing black armor and death goes before him, that's references to that, uh, temperance, the balance, finding a neutral stance, not being passionate one way or another, then we have the devil card, base passions rising up being dominated by the ego, all of the, you know, excessively negative parts of life. We have the tower, that creative destruction. With the tower in this deck, though, it's showing that things are being cast down. And it's more, in this particular deck, it's very much about just destruction. There's still a creative aspect, f because from the ashes you rise, but it's really saying things sometimes just have to be torn completely down. And the symbology with that card, the way Pamela talks about it and this Im er, illustrates it, is part of that. We have the star, which again, I like how she kind of made neutral nudity. It's not blatant. Uh, we have the sun, which is in... Or no, this is the moon, sorry. It looks like the sun because of the way the dogs are howling. But again, you see you have the, the duality of the pillars here. You always, if there's going to be a duality in the card, it's going to show up in those pillars. And it's like the pillars of blessings or um, severity. I don't remember all the exact terms, but it's the positive and negative aspects of life. We have the sun with this one, which is a really neat illustration with all the sunflowers. And the sun here is one of the more commonly used faces of the sun because the sun is the divine masculine aspect so it's a little bit more stern whereas with the moon let's go back to that one she still looks stern but it's not as grumpy it's still like kids versus his is more just like really so you still have that child energy of like looking down at the kids and that's what the you know the father and mother will do for us we have the judgment and this one is an odd one because it's like you're in an ocean in boats but you're also in graves <laughs> so you've got a very interesting dynamic going on with this particular judgment card and then we have the last of our major arcana is the world and this one again you have your symbols of the elements in the four corners up here down here but notice that your 
the red is symbolizing more of the darkness has been bound but you're a continuous cycle again but the cool thing with this one is when you stand in the center you are the beginning point of the world you are the the creator of your world you're the one kind of in control and that's the cool thing with this deck is it it explains it but it does so in such simplicity that it gives you room to interpret without too much uh chaos getting in the way and i like i have a lot of decks <laughs> not gonna lie and i like the simplicity of this one because i've seen the images i've got books that have all the images and i just didn't have the deck and the beauty of this deck is you can sit down and you can meditate on a card you can focus on what can this card tell me in the minor arcana we won't go through all these um but like the three of cups when focusing and just sitting there and contemplating it as you're learning the tarot or as you're working for a client it gives you the ability to kind of allow the images to bring forward more the three of hearts interesting that i pulled two threes uh <laughs> 33 hmm. that sounds suspicious doesn't it uh but you've got that type of energy the queen of pentacles showing blessings but also slight sorrow i mean there's a lot of fun that you, you can learn with this deck and if you've seen the video that i did on portable magic which is a uh, book review this is one of the best decks to use with that um so what we'll do now is and the, the neat thing with the portable magic is it talks about how to use these the tarot deck especially the rider weight or the thoth deck there's a few other options and there's been people commenting on preferred decks which i love um that they use for that that, that type of ritual is it's a an easy introduction to the concept of ceremonial mysticism or magic and it, based loosely on some of the golden dawn traditions so you get an idea of how to actually work with the cards first and foremost but you also get an idea of how um, if something like the golden dawn would be for you if you decided to join one or join a group or not but it's written by an author who i really do like he does a lot of really great work he does does his research and it's not written from a point of this is a concept that i may have read about one time he's actually done the work he knows what he's talking about um and that's donald tyson and he does a lot of other work as well which i'm in the middle of reading the last book in a series and then we're gonna i'm gonna go over those because he has some interesting uh <laughs> books that go with that anyway our test uh read here is the Four of Swords. So this is a time for um, quiet. You've you've been fighting some battles. This is how I'm getting it anyway. But you still have some. You have more secrets hidden below you. But things are kind of at a quiet point. This is also saying that it's a just a call to rest. A time to you're ready for battle. You have everything set up. You've done your fighting. But it's now it's time to just chill. You have you have more in you. Don't get me wrong. But it's just time to be kind of quiet and still and let things settle um, just for fun let's see what the book has to say because I usually don't read these unless it's um, one of my Oracle decks four of swords do, 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 do. Uh, it's the effigy of a knight in the attitude of prayer at full length upon his tomb vigilance retreat solitude hermits repose exile tomb coffin so it's calling to for rest and meditation if we're going with a prayer prayerful night we also have the nine of wands or staves depending on how you want to look at it but the, i'm going to go with wands because that's the common tongue and so this is nine of air nine of you're almost there you've gotten to a point where there's a lot of things going on the planning's in place the actions are starting to come through and you've been on a journey is what the nine of air says to me uh and it's nine of air nine, <laughs> nine of wands you can tell where i were usually work as elements um but that's your journey is coming close to an end you're almost there it's not quite over yet but you're getting there uh, the book says the figure leans upon his staff and has an expectant look as if awaiting an enemy behind him are eight other staves erect in orderly disposition as you can see 
um, they're kind of like a palisade, like a guard. Uh, divinatory meanings, meaning if you're using this in a reading versus just learning the words, it's strength in opposition, uh, meeting the attack on our onslaught boldly, uh, possible adjuncts, delays, suspension, adjournment. Things are going, doesn't mean you're done yet. That's really what that is going with. And our last one is the King of Swords. The King of Swords is the fire masculine energy. No, I did that completely backwards. This one is fire. This one is air. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, like I said, my brain's a little scattered. But the King of Swords, swords are air. Wands and staves are fire. The King of Swords is you've completed this intellectual study. Things are kind of settling down for you. Um, the book says he sits in judgment holding unsheathed sign of his suit. Whatever arises out of the idea of judgment and all its connections, power, command, authority, militant, intelligent, law, offices of the crown, and so forth. So it's the completion. You've been there, done that, and you can speak with authority because the unsheathed sword is saying, I am knowledgeable in this situation and I am prepared to defend myself in this situation. Other than me not paying attention to stabs and wands or fire, um, <laughs> this is kind of a fun deck to work with. And like I said, if it's, you're new to tarot and you want to get used to the idea of tarot, um, the angel decks are generally the easier ones because they're super gentle. But if you want to actually, once you do that and you want to take it to a next level, you can pick whatever other deck you want, but I highly recommend getting one of these. I don't know why I put it off so long, but I did. Uh, there'll be a link in the description if you want to just shortcut to go check one out. Um, and the beauty is they are kind of coming down in price. Originally, when I first started getting into this type of work, um, the Rider Weight deck was almost 50 bucks. And I don't know why, I cannot tell you why, but now it's getting down to a bit more reasonable price, not to say that I haven't bought decks for that before, but these ones are starting to come down and it varies on where you buy them as to what the price is, but it's nowhere near what it used to be. Um, so with that, I will wrap this up. If you're new here, hit that uh, subscribe button, drop a like on the video and comment. Let me know your thoughts. Um, like I said, this is, for those who already read tarot, this deck is, not a new thing for you, but for those who are kind of getting interested in it, wanting to learn more about it, um, this is a good deck just to have on hand because there's times where your other decks, they're giving you answers, but it's not quite cut and dried. When you work with the Smith Weight deck, it tends to be a bit more upfront with, no, this is what's going on. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the deck um, and we'll probably start to introduce this deck into some of my monthly readings in the near future. So uh, have a great rest of your week and day and I will talk to you in the next video.